you may not be aware of this, but I think many of our favourite game developers from when we were young started out on things like BASIC, so it'd be a good starting point for us if we would like to develop good games. I'm talking about things a bit more advanced than the drills in the uh, BBC BASIC manual, or the Commodore BASIC manual that you can see here. So um, yeah, let's talk about that because I'm interested in that and I think a lot of you are too. So let's have a look. So, now that I've had a few days to play around with BASIC, uh, I'll let you know what I've been up to. So, I figured out the things that you are easily able to do and not easily able to do with relation to gaming. And um, it, it occurs to me that things like platforming or um, having two players control something, that's quite difficult with BASIC. So, yeah, generally the kind of games that are, if you're going to start out, text adventures. That's easy enough because it's just a, a loop of kind of if-then statements. It's like you find an object, you define the object and the environment's already defined. Or you might just have no environment, you're just in a room or something like that, so it's plain. So you can say if you pick up the thing this happens and if you leave it in the room this happens or you pick up the thing and it's this colour or it's this colour or you know, it's, it's all very simplistic kind of logically. And that got me thinking, I thought, okay, what is a game really? So if you think of something like this, a jigsaw puzzle, Sorry about the ear death there. Uh, yeah, so a jigsaw puzzle, 500 pieces, but the rules are quite simple. The rules are you've got to put all the pieces together so they all fit. So there's one rule for that game and um, anyone can play it, it's easy. So obviously the complexity of the picture and the amount of pieces can go up and down, but generally if you can do an easy puzzle and you've got the time, you'll be able to do a, a more difficult puzzle. So that's the kind of thing in basic that would be easy to do where you just define a picture and then you just show a piece of it and say okay here's another piece where does this piece go and you could have like a grid that's cut into the shapes or something like that so that would be easy to do basic but I mean who wants to play a puzzle something like this might be a little bit more challenging obviously drawing the picture is easy I mean there's commands like you can draw a line you can say uh, zero zero is like down here in the corner and 500 500 is up there in the other corner so if you don't draw draw a dot on zero zero is down here draw a dot 500 500 it's over here so you can kind of use line circle tools and filling in uh, you know a square and then fill in a square to make a box so that's quite easy so drawing the board out is easy enough but then you've got the problem of moving the pieces without destroying the rest of the board so that's quite difficult um, because in basic there's you well I'm not sure sometimes you can use sprites I think advanced basic has got sprites in it but I mean, for me and you, if we're not very good at basic, we will not use sprites because it's too complicated. So just moving a thing across a board can be quite difficult. So you might use a character, like a text character, and then obviously the space where the characters come out of, you can either repaint a different character on it, or you could redefine some graphics to go on there. So that adds a level of complexity. And I think I think the level of, the, the complexity is such that, say something like Monopoly, if I pull out the manual, let's do it, if I look in here and I get out the rules, right, this is the complexity of the game. So it's basically, it's probably about 300 words for the whole rules of the game. So if this was a computer game, each one of these rules is going to need its own one of these. So it's kind of, um, it would probably be like a 120 page book or something like that. So you could do it in about 5,000 words maybe, something like that. So that's the complexity of the really basics of Monopoly in a computer game and then something like um, this game pandemic oddly enough I got this just before Covid broke out thought it'd be a laugh how wrong I was so this is more more complex and I'm not going to open this because the, the books right at the bottom but the manual for this is sizable compared to that one and this might be a little bit more I've got to start switching my phone off this might be a little bit more of a challenge to put across in basic and you've got to make the decision as a programmer the extra effort that I'm going to put into making this into a basic program compared to Monopoly and the puzzle, is it going to be worth it in terms of experience? Is it more fun to play this in relation to how much time this would take than it is to do a puzzle, which as we've already discussed is fairly easy to do. So um, yeah, I think stuff like this become necessary. If you're, I mean David Murray has gone way beyond stuff like this, but for someone like me who's a basic level programmer who's just getting started, this introduces 140 new commands which are to do sprites and graphics and sounds and stuff like that. So this become a necessity if you want your game to actually be fast moving sprite based 
so yeah, that's where we are. Um, there's tons of devices out there. You can get a Raspberry Pi that's got a version of, I think it's called Portal Basic or something like that, unofficial Basic on there. Um, but the things I use, I've got the C64 clone BBC, that's got Basic on there. I've got QBasic on an old DOS laptop, just for a laugh, it doesn't really relate to it. Oh yeah, and I've got BeebM, an emulator for BBC Basic on here on this computer. So I'm going to carry on playing with those and um, I'll let you know when I get to an actual good game. I can write Hangman or simple stuff like that half an hour and it's a really nice polished hangman game um, but I'm gonna try I'm gonna go through this before I make another basic video and I'm gonna present to you the graphics commands and things that are possible there because you might be surprised there's tons even on the Commodore 64 there's good games on there with good graphics that you'd be surprised that they were able to do on there so anyway that's all for later video I hope you enjoyed that and uh, I'll see you in the next one bye